Good afternoon and welcome to our Friday afternoon broadcast over on the IF Keto Family Live Facebook page. This will also be uploaded to my YouTube channel later this afternoon. So don't worry, you can always catch us on the rebroadcast. If you're jumping on live with us, please take a second to hit that like button on Facebook. And if you're joining us on the rebroadcast on YouTube, please consider us subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified when we upload new content. This from our um, IF Keto Family Life page will be new content to the uh, YouTube channel. Really quickly, I'd like to introduce us. I am Diane. This is Michael. And we have been practicing intermittent fasting and living the keto like lifestyle in our family for a couple of years now. And today we are going to share with you a little bit of our history and why it is that intermittent fasting really did shift from something that I was doing as a woman trying to fix my body as I was beginning to age to really focusing on Michael and his body as he was starting to age. And now it is something that we just do within our whole family. And we're hoping that what we share with you today will resonate with you and maybe uh, touch you in a way to consider maybe incorporating intermittent, intermittent fasting or maybe starting to experiment with a little with it a little bit um, based on what it is we want to share with you. So you know, we always uh, uh, think about sharing statistics and facts uh, when we're talking about these things. But I'm a firm believer, and I know Michael's feeling this way now that he's knee deep in this with me, um, that statistics don't really matter if you can't relate it to you personally. So that's why today we're going to talk about our story and a little bit of the process that Michael has gone through. You've heard mine a lot. We're going to share a little bit about Michael and us together as a married couple. And that's really where we came up with the title of the value of a man's health and, um, and how we had to take a, like a look at where our life was going and where we wanted it to continue to go. And some things that we've, Felt like we've missed out on the past and we didn't want to continue missing out on. So do me a favor. If you jump on, make sure you uh, leave us a comment so we know that you're there. Okay. So um, Michael has um, always been the breadwinner of our family. He is one of the hardest working men I know. He will do whatever he has to do to support his family. We made a decision when Logan was really little that I was going to leave my corporate job and stay home and be a stay at home mom. I've always sort of worked on the side, but he's primarily the breadwinner. And so um, he's missed out on a lot of some things that went on in our family life, missing soccer games sometimes or baseball games or volleyball games with Gabby or whatever it was that was going on. He was always the one that missed out because he had to work. And my thing with him was always just put your head down and go to work because we need you to work kind of thing. And I'm home with the kids. And that got to a point where it was just pure exhaustion for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, grinding for, for so many years and, and as a man, you feel like, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm supposed to work hard and, and, you know, and we've always kind of been in this health thing, but you're not really following what you should be doing. Like, you're supposed to sleep a certain amount of time. You're not supposed to be working 20 hours a day and and trying to do everything. I mean, I was trying to coach baseball. Uh, I was, uh, uh, you know, we're doing all kinds of side businesses and, and doing so many things and just hustling all the time. And you, you start to, it starts to affect your health. It really does. Uh, I remember after the 2008 thing that when the real estate market started to crash, um, I was starting to feel a lot of stress, a lot of heart palpitations. I even went in and they hooked me up on like the, one of those, what is it, an EKG thing that you sleep with at night to to check what's going on with your heart. And uh, the doctor told me, he said, you have a healthy heart. You have a runner's heart. I mean, your heart's fantastic. Uh, so what's going on? It's just basically just stress, you know. So I was just so stressed out. So I think as men, what we do is we think we grind, grind, grind. And we kind of eat on the fly and we think that that's okay. And I'll just take my chances and see what happens is what, I mean, I've heard that from a lot of my friends. They're like, Hey, I'll just take my chances. You know, that one guy, the runner guy, the marathon guy, he dropped dead of a heart attack and he was, he was healthy. Well, don't use that as your excuse because your life's different. So you have to look at it. What, how you can be healthier in your life, not what someone else has done or what some stat, you have to see how you're living your life 
And I, the way I was living my life was, you know, I thought I was living healthy, but I was under, so, like, like I said, a tremendous amount of stress. And, uh, you know, and, and there were some times where, you know, we were eating like that old, that old style of eating where you ate every two hours. And, you know, I wake up in the morning, I stuff myself with, with, uh, oatmeal and and spinach and you know berries and uh, berries and and i'm i'm eating that as fast as i can because i gotta go to work and you know now now this lifestyle is so much simpler uh, of a lifestyle to intermittent fast uh and you thought you were so so he thought he was super healthy because when you look at what a healthy man is, you know, he doesn't have diabetes. He didn't have heart problems. He didn't have cholesterol issues. All of that was great. So on paper, he was super healthy, but he was really, you know, driving hard and then eating that six days, six times a day, super carb heavy sort of lifestyle because oatmeal and toast at the same time during breakfast and having to wake up earlier to have time to make breakfast and pack a lunch and then get off to work and not sleeping enough because you had to have time for all of that kind of stuff and then missing family stuff and all that, that he was slowly becoming sick, but in a pay, in a way that's not easily documented on paper. So he was fooling himself into thinking that he was fine, but it was showing up in his anxiety and stress, which we've shared before, you know, with some of the heart palpitations he had and those kind of things where he just felt super stressed out. And, um, and then started realizing, and, and that's how I got him to start intermittent fasting. I said, what if you had extra time in the morning? What if you could sleep an extra half an hour and you didn't have to wake up so early? What if you didn't have to stress about packing the lunch and taking it to work? And so his, your main concern originally was at work that you I'm were going to be hungry. <laughs> you're <gonna> be hungry. <laughs> I'm not going to have any strength or energy right. you know and so we practiced on the on the days he didn't have to go to work where we would just practice fasting during the day and he could see that he would be fine and then you just kind of surprised he surprised me one day and he came home from work and he said what that well, you that like I, you didn't I, have breakfast yeah, and then didn't have any energy issues at all mm -hmm. you know and, and as a matter of fact i'm not even hungry right now you know yeah so that was kind of a, a, a where I turned the corner with it and I thought, okay, well maybe this could work. Uh, and then like we talked about before, I was dealing with the, uh, the high uric acid, uh, which, which is what gives you the gout. So I had some gout issues, not like gout issues present, like in my feet, at least I didn't think so, uh, because I got plantar fasciitis and then I started putting, putting those things together and thinking, okay, well, maybe it's the inflammation, and it was just inflammation from the gout, which is causes your foot to be crammed into your shoe. And when you're, you're out jogging, you're, you're just getting all this, all kinds of plantar fasciitis issues. So it helped me fix all that too, which was a, which was a big deal. Yeah. And so where we came to, like, we had to come together in an agreement was when we had to have a heart to heart situation that was very like blunt and out in the open of, what are we going to do your family if on paper everything looks fine for you, but you end up dropping dead of a heart attack or you end up getting sick um, and you can no longer work, which, you know, seems sort of um, I don't I don't want it to seem materialistic or cold because this is just life and how life works. We made the decision. I was going to stay home. He was going to work. And what if he got so stressed out that he stroked out or had a heart attack, what would we do? And when we started looking at those things, we freaked out like, oh my gosh, we have to take his health as serious as we were taking my health and really had to figure out a way for him to not be so stressed out and not have those anxiety sort of attacky feelings and really allow his body to adjust hormonally as well because we have to remember men have hormones too and their, their hormones fluctuate as well and that can cause some added stress onto their system and so when we started thinking about all those sad times that we had in the past where he had to miss out because of work scheduling or whatever it was and then we started looking forward we're like well, how sad would that be if 
we know you've had to make sacrifices to support our family and do the things that you had to do because of the lifestyle we chose to make. But what's going to happen down the road if you get really sick and then you have to miss the future as well. And we said, nope, we're not going to allow that to happen. We need to get you healthy mm -hmm. because we want to retire and we want to have grandkids that we want to be part of their life. And we want our kids to have a dad that's going to walk them down the aisle and do all those things. And I know that there's those situations that are uncontrollable. And I know that there's people who have suffered these kind of losses. We know some of those people who's Michael has friends at work who just didn't show up one day and we find out that they had a massive heart attack and, and they're not with us anymore. And that really woke us up and we thought, nope, if we have control over this situation, we're going to do some stuff to make it change. And I think that's also where you kind of had the aha moment as well when, when your heart was scary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely scary. And uh, like about a year ago, was it about a year ago? I was dealing with the, uh, some anxiety stuff. I'm like, where is this coming from? I mean, like I've never dealt with, you know, this kind of anxiety and, uh, and I think just being so stressed out and having so many things going on in life. And, and there are a few things in your diet too, that you think, Oh, well, I, I kind of got the diet under control and you really don't, you know? Uh, so yeah, it, it really brought to a realization of a lot of things that were, that were going on. But I think as men, like I said, we tend to kind of march forward. We're like, uh, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to work hard. And, you know, but in reality, I mean, you start looking at, I mean, like we're older, we're older parents, you know, and our, and we have to be, we're going to have to be healthy for our kids when they, you know, we have one graduating this year and then we have a daughter. From that's, high school. <laughs> we are graduating from high school and we have a daughter and I'm, I'll be 54 next month. Uh, and we have a daughter that's in the sixth grade. So we have a ways to go if we want to see grandkids. And if we don't get on the right path of health, I mean, it's, it could be a disaster for us, for our kids. You know, they'll be taking care of us if we don't take care of ourselves. And yeah. we do not want that. Yeah. And you see it a lot nowadays. I mean, you see a lot of parents that they can no longer take care of themselves and they have their, you know, they put that, it's not a burden. I mean, but, it can be a burden for your kids uh, to have to take care of you. Well, I have to take care of you if you could have done things differently. Right, if you could have done things yeah. different. Yeah. And you can do things different. You just have to be conscious of it. And I think a lot of times people are not conscious of it. They're just like, oh, I'll just wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I can eat chips uh, in the middle of the night and wake up and go to, you know, here in Texas, a big thing is Whataburger. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people love what. They'll go to Whataburger every day and they think that's OK. I mean, I've been I've been doing this for years. I mean, but and then one day they suddenly have a, a, a massive stroke or a heart attack. Well, you know, and then you kind of look at it and go, well, you've kind of been on this pattern. And I think we all have that ability to look at. I mean, do this. Look at people when you're people watching. Look at people and you could see an older guy that's. 55 you go wow this guy looks like he's in shape he's walking at a fast pace skin's clear you know you can tell he's a healthy person then you can look at another person that's the same age and they can barely get around and you and ask yourself like what kind of lifestyle are these people these two different people living of course there's genetics and there's all kinds of things of course but if you put them on an equal playing field why is this person this way can barely get around? And why is this guy skipping around? And he's got, you know, he's got some guns going and he looks like he's in, uh, you know, uh, some kind of shape. What's the difference? Well, you know what the difference is. I mean, it's just common sense. I mean, like one guy did lived his life a certain way and probably ate chips in the middle of the night. And uh, this other guy was on a path of health. You know, which path are you going to be on? And we definitely want to be on that path of health, getting the right sleep and, getting your workouts in, you know, eating the right foods. And this intermittent fasting has been a great way to reduce that workout time and really get us on a great path of health. And we've, this year we've been working on the sleep stuff. I mean, the sleep's been a, I mean, and there's a time to grind. Of yeah. course, you're going to be doing a project and you're not going to get as much sleep. You might get four hours of sleep a night, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about gener generally for the most part, you need to get, a certain amount of sleep. You should be getting seven, eight, 
nine hours uh, of sleep at night. And that's hard to do. I mean, that's you have to really purposely work hard to get that much sleep. Yeah. And and we had to to literally get down to the to the question of what would we do if something happens to you? What would we do if something happens to the breadwinner or the head of the household or the man in your life or the boyfriend that's been living you with you for the last 20 years or whoever it is in your life that you count on for for financial um, support or maybe even just financial input, um, social support, emotional support, family support. We're entering into what we are call our golden years. Like we're excited about getting older because a lot of that stuff we had to deal with in our youth is like we're done and over with it. We don't have to deal with that anymore. Struggling to raise kids and Michael and I went to college in, in our adult years and that was, you know, hard and the financial things that we went through and we're looking forward and we're so excited about the years ahead of us. And how sad would that be if if I was taking care of myself and he wasn't that I would have to go through the golden years by myself or skip the golden years or be resentful toward him because he's not taking care of himself and I'm taking care of myself like that. This is the time really in a marriage or a relationship where we really have to think about the other person and the things that we're doing and how they affect that other person. I wouldn't want Michael to be off gallivanting, having a great time, feeling really healthy and confident about himself and me being stuck at home because I'm sick if I can control it. And the same thing for him. And we had to have that like really like hardcore in our face conversation about what do we want our retirement years to look like? What do we want the next 10 years to look like? And even the gout situation, the plantar fasciitis scared us because we're active people and we want to travel and we want to run together and walk our dog. And when you can't, like when 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 Mike was at that point where his gout was really bad and he had all that pain in his feet, he could barely walk out of bed in the morning. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like what is his pro life? Of plantar, yeah, plantar fasciitis. So, well, yeah, and all of it was kind of related yeah. with inflammation and all that. But still, it's like you don't want to see your husband like that, barely able to walk out of bed, and now he doesn't do that anymore. So that was one of those situations that was totally controllable by some dietary changes and just having an open mind and listening to what your body's telling you when you do something. And so now that scary thought of all those things that we might might have had to sacrifice in the years coming up, we don't fear anymore. Like we just went out and bought running shoes today. Like we can't wait. Springtime is like the best time to run in Texas. And we're super excited about getting some running in together and, and being able to go on some really great walks with Callie. And we're talking to Gabby. Um, talking to Gabby about um, joining like a cross country team for middle school and we can run with her and we would miss out on all those things if Michael hadn't been able to figure that out and heal his body through what he did with fasting and figuring out that gluten's a problem and it was a really an inflammation issue with everything involved with his feet so now we're hopeful for the future and so you have that opportunity too to really just think about where your body's aching where your body's falling apart where your body's ailing you and can you give it an opportunity to heal itself for your life together down the road can you do it for your kids down the road can you do it for your grandkids down the road so you can be the grandfather that can take them to the park and play or the grandfather that's going to show up at every baseball game um and and be an active male role model in in the people's lives that you care about the most mm, yeah absolutely um and it takes a hardcore talk sometimes and if you guys re don't remember or if you haven't been around it from the beginning days we used to call this gucci water in our house michael called it gucci, yes, water, got me drinking right, gucci water because he didn't understand why i had to buy bottled water and why i had to drink this water and now he drinks it just as much as i do so the men come around trust me um and then when they do it's a beautiful thing but you might have to sit down with your spouse and have that like this is what you bring to our family this is what your value is to our family and this is the way we've set our life up and all of the decisions that you've made to get to this point are all the decisions you made to get to that point you can't regret them or look back and wish you did them differently you are where you are and then you have to look forward and go okay now we have the opportunity to change some things from the past or make things better or plan for our future and I want you to come with me. Here are some things we need to look at or to consider to make sure that we can continue this journey together. 
And I know it's an uncomfortable conversation and I know um, if there's tension, it can oft often be hard, but I do think it's that thing that we really appreciated the fact that we were able to have that conversation and get to a point where we go, okay, we have to be on the same page. And then when you're together on the same page, living the same lifestyle, it's so much fun and we have so much energy and we love what we do when we're fasting. We love what we do when we're feasting. We love the energized sense of calm that we have. And I love that I have a happy, healthy husband that's by my side that I know is going to be able to do the things that we've always talked about doing. We're going to be able to do it together. Yeah. And sometimes I think people just wait too late. I mean, they, you wait till you're sick already. It could be too late by then, you know, not always, but a lot of times it's too late when you, when you wait, Till the time that you're sick you know i mean if you start working on things now and start living your life a certain way now uh you won't you won't have to deal with those issues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. yeah and ha and michael how would you say you're feeling today versus two years ago i think now i don't have to worry as much about what my next thing's going to be because i know we're we we're on our fitness journey five or six years ago I was more of the mindset, I have to do a certain program, have to be on a certain diet for a certain amount of time. And, you know, and that really grinds on you. It's really, I mean, talk about stress. <laughs> I mean, that's stress in itself because you know that day is gonna come to an end when you come to the end of that workout program or come to the end of that diet. Okay, what's my next thing gonna be? Because I'm exhausted and I don't wanna eat like that anymore. You know, that's not who I am. Now I feel like I'm more, authentic in the way I eat because it, we're on spring break this week here in Texas. And man, we go out to dinner. Matter of fact, this morning we went out to a nice breakfast. And so we live our life authentically, like whatever's going on, like we'll probably be barbecue tonight, you know, with the kids, whatever. And it's not like the way we're going to eat. It'll be different how we live our life next week. You know, we did some fasting this week, but we'll do a lot more uh, back on the reg regular schedule next week. So I feel like now, I can live more of a authentic life and not feel like I'm stuck living a certain way. And then uh, I'll never go back to my old way. Now let me put on 20 pounds again, 25 pounds. And then you get in that situation, that yo-yo, like, okay, I can put 25 back on. Let me, okay, let me take 25 back off. Here's my plan for that. Then you put it back on and put it back. I mean, come on, that's exhausting. So I feel like I don't have to live that way anymore. I feel like, I maintained a certain lifestyle and this is a lifestyle now more than a diet or a timing thing like, Oh, I'm going to do this for, I'll do this for two months and then uh, we'll see what's after that. No, I, this is how I live. And so now I'm able to maintain a lot easier. And if we go out tonight and eat a certain way, I'm cool with that too. It's not going to affect me. It's not going to make me put on 25 pounds, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you can choose when you want to fast and when you want to feast, which is right. The, which is the great thing, especially now that he's feeling better and he's healed and he's confident and he knows he's not going to starve to death. Um, I mean, there's days when he, he, he's eager to fast longer than I am. And there's days when I'm eager to fast longer than he is. And so we can kind of push each other to, or, pull each other or whatever it is we need to do. But the best thing is that we're living in harmony in our house. He's healthy. He's feeling better. He's feeling as energetic and as healthy and as happy as I am. And that's a true gift. Um, at this stage in our marriage, we're going to be married 18 years this April, right? Yeah. I have to ask him all the time. Mm -hmm. I forget. Yeah. Um, and we're going to Mexico for a week and we're so excited uh, to, that we finally get to, we haven't been on a vacation alone in forever. So we're super excited to be able to go do that and we're healthy and energetic. And that is a gift that I think should never ever be taken lightly or pushed aside. You're just taking a period of your time fellas and you're not going to eat. It's super simple. Your life becomes simplified. You have more time. Um, it does really strengthen a relationship when you do things in harmony as opposed to doing things against each other. And there are a lot of times when, when women are trying to do good for themselves and they feel like their man is sabotaging what they're trying to do. Fortunately, we never felt that way in our relationship, but I hear it a lot from the women who um, are with us in our uh, intermittent fasting for today's aging woman community. And no woman wants to feel sabotaged by the person that 
claims to love them. So it's a really easy way to get on board with your spouse, to support them in what they're doing. It's not a diet. You don't have to give up anything that you want to give and you can get a whole lot back in your life and you could be uh, there for your family as you start to grow, as you as you start to age in retirement. Um, like I said, our plans are to be super active when we retire, and it would be a sad situation if there was only half of the Parham package there to do that. I would be resentful if I had to slow down for him, and he would be resentful if he had to slow down for me. Again, if we have a choice, and for a lot of people, there is a choice. Um, don't be stubborn. Don't uh, be closed off or closed minded to it. Just give it a try and see what happens. You don't have to fast for lengthy periods of time to make significant changes in your health and overall well-being. 12 hours a day is a if you could do if you could fast 12 hours a day to start off with. And do that consistently, you would notice significant improvements in your overall well-being. And then that's all you need to build the confidence that you need to have to go beyond that. Um, so it's not like you're starving yourself or you're going days without food. 12 hours, 12 hours can prove to show significant improvement in your overall health. So our plea to you fellows out there who might be a little resistant is just give it a try. Do like Michael did an experiment. Yeah. I would say just experiment with it, uh, you know, try 12. I mean, 12 hours is easy. I mean, that's just basically going to bed and waking up and eating breakfast a little bit later or waiting till lunch. It's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, the part that might be a little bit trickier, trying to get to 20. And I found with that, that's not so hard either. You just stop eating early and you get to 20 really, really quick. You have early dinner. Yeah, you have an early dinner. I mean, if you think about it, you 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 have your last meal at six, so you got plenty of time. I mean, like if you're going till till twelve, that's eighteen hours. Am I math mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. eighteen hours. Mm -hmm. All you need is two more hours. So you go until two o'clock. I mean, it's not that far stretch. I mean, so when you hear people go, "Oh, what's that fasting thing? What are you doing? You're starving yourself." I mean, it's not that kind of thing. I mean, it's not it's not really that big of a deal. It's not that hard to do. Right. So experience is key. Um, going slow is key. And just trusting that there have been people before you that have done it. And it's something that you could do with your spouse that for us has kind of become uh, like a fun little hobby thing that we do, which might sound crazy, but we love it because now when we do go out to eat, we really, we we're thoughtful about it and we think about what we want to eat. We were, we're, um, we've, totally upped our level of quality of food that we eat. We don't risk anything on a bad meal anymore. And it's really become something that we enjoy doing as a couple together. And for me, it's confidently, um, it it's makes, makes me feel safe and confident that my husband now is feeling so much better. He's not having those heart palpitations. He's not feeling stressed out. He's not feeling like he's going to, you know, fall out on us. And, and that's a big thing for me as a woman. And I'm sure it is for a lot of other women that you want to make sure that you you feel safe and that's the biggest thing for me I guess maybe it's part of my love language I don't know but knowing that he's he's happy and healthy makes me happy um and and there's no other better gift I would say and I would like to say one thing I'm proud of this lady I mean she talks about me being the breadwinner she's really worked her butt off we put some stuff together uh that I don't know if I'll be the breadwinner anymore I mean like it Ladies, there's an I don't, this, option too. This could, <laughs> this could be, you know, I don't know. I think that's it for me, it's, which is good. I mean, I've, this year I've totally been able to pull back and uh, not work 20-hour days, and uh, it's been great. It's been great. So, hey, our work together all these years has paid off Yeah, that, you know, we can kind of pull the brakes on a little bit. and uh, Take care of ourselves. Yeah, take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that that's really been a blessing that – all the work she's put in the past couple years now, mm -hmm. that's really kind of made a huge change uh, in our finances. But that's a whole nother story. You don't want to hear that story. Right but it's now. taking a lot of stress <laughs> off you. It's taking a lot. It's taking a lot of stress off of my life because I'm, I'm the type of person like most men probably are like, I'm going to get it done. You know, like there's days I would be, I would get, 20 appraisal orders in a day, you know, and, and, uh, I'd have to go because I only have a staff of, you know, three people and, and to go through all those orders, it was, 
you know, it was really stressful and I'd have to cherry pick what I was able to do with my time. And uh, I mean, we were blessed that it was financially, it, it's been great, but it can still be very stressful. But but the, I think the key takeaway for that for you, Michael, um, and, and a lot of you, I know probably feel this way too, is we, we were living a healthy lifestyle, meaning that we talk about it a lot and we, we embrace the healthy lifestyle, but he was working 20 hours a day getting four hours of sleep. He was sedentary, meaning he was in his chair for, I don't know, probably 18 of those 20 hours. And he was eating six times a day, a bunch of carbohydrates. So all that sugar breaking down in his body was probably a big part of the anxiety and the heart palpitations he was having and all the sickness that he was feeling. So, you know, you can fool yourself too into thinking that you're living this healthy lifestyle. We thought we were living a healthy lifestyle and he was falling apart and I was falling apart. So, you know, that's where you have to come to that point where you have to just be really honest with yourself and look at your life and go, we looked at him and we're like, Oh, and this and a heart rate monitor or a step tracker we use as an inactivity checker for ourselves because I was in the health and fitness business too. I was coaching women all day long on how to stay fit and how to, you know, eat right. And then I got a Fitbit and I was like, wow, I moved yeah, like, I'm not moving at all. Yeah, I moved like 200 steps today. I'm like super sedentary. And as your body starts to change and as you start to age and as your metabolism starts to slow down, you can't afford to be sedentary. He was super sedentary too. Like we could never get to like 5,000 steps in a day type of thing. We're sitting all day and then eating all day. So you have to be really, um, you know, use use the reality checker too to to make sure that just because you think you're living healthy doesn't mean you're necessarily living healthy. Yeah. Just because you think you're drinking a lot of water in a day doesn't mean you're drinking a lot of water in a day if you're not, you're not tracking, tracking it. it. it only yeah, happens. just because you think you're eating healthy doesn't necessarily mean you're eating healthy, and that will all show up at some point in your life, and it usually shows up when you're not expecting it and don't let that happen to you become very aware, use things to monitor your, your true reality of what your life is and then be open to making the changes that you need to make. We're very active now. Yes, we monitor that. We monitor our sleep. We monitor our workouts. We monitor when we're fasting and when we're feasting and we're very conscious in everything that we're doing because we don't want to get it. We don't want to get sideswept by believing we were living a certain way and then having the reality come and kind of hit us in the face. And yeah. If these, if these rings don't close in a, in a day, I'm bummed, <laughs> you know, so I want these things to close every oh, day. Activity. All, all my activity goals close them every single day. Yeah. You know, so that's a big lesson too. Don't just think you're living um, a healthy life. Make sure you have a, a way to track it um, so that you know you're living your true healthiness out loud and you're not just yep. believing something yep. in your head. So Absolutely. we hope this helps. I know there's a lot of men out there who are, are very skeptical of fasting and we get that because we had that. Um, he was always super supportive, but never thought it really would apply to him. So I say just give it a go. Start with a 12 hour fast. Have your wife, if she's doing it, ask her for her help or just mimic her and what she's doing. Michael did that too when he went to work that one day and came home. He was like, I didn't take lunch or breakfast and I'd feel great. Um, Just you don't have to pronounce it to anybody. You don't have to get anybody's permission. If you're a man and you've seen it, you see in your household what your wife is doing, just do it. You don't need to get her permission or you don't need to pronounce it to her. Just do it. Try it for a couple days and then surprise her with with how great you're feeling um, and and just know that it's a great thing. And there's some guys here in this community. I mean, our community here is pretty new, but we have some guys that are coming on board that are uh, that are following uh, following us here on I have Keto Family Life. And I'm proud of you guys. And uh, just just stick with it. And a big shout out to Uncle Dave. If you're out there listening, I know you're. We're proud. We're super proud of you uh, with what you're doing, and, and stick with it, man. We're we're here for you. So. Yeah. Okay. So let me see if we have any questions. So Diane is here. Welcome from Cold PA. Oh, I'm so sorry, girlfriend. It is 85 here today. I think. I don't know. We're in shorts and 85. sleeveless tops. It's so nice. Joy, hello, girlfriend. Kim, greetings from Pennsylvania. Good to have you with us. Okay. So if you put add me in the comments, then you'll get to um, receive. You'll be on our email list. 
So make sure you put add me in the comments. We're sending out emails and stuff like that. Of um, uh, Today's recipe email is the amazing shrimp tacos that Michael barbecued for us the other night. Uh, so you'll get that if you're on our email list. Gina from uh, Phoenix in your March class register for April. Awesome. Um, let's see. Hello, Diane and Michael. Okay, I think it's the same thing. I mean, I love that you are highlighting men's health to be growing old healthy together is awesome. My hubby and I are 56. No drugs needed. Awesome. Yeah, that we're the same way, girlfriend. Uh, it is funny as you age, Michael and I will always come back to this. We go to a, a doctor's appointment. We're like, ah, I think we disappointed them today. Like we have more, no medication. We're totally healthy. Like they looked so disappointed and sad. Um, Liz, hello, Aunt Gwen. Thanks for jumping on with us. So my Aunt Gwen, if you guys follow me in my other page, um, her two daughters have been, my cousins have been super successful with intermittent fasting. So she's just recently jumped on and my uncle, her husband has jumped on and they're having amazing results already. And they're just starting in their first week. So we're super and excited we're so for them. So guys. proud of them. Um, Joy, I can't wait for my husband to get home to listen to this together. I appreciate the two of you so very much. Oh, Joy, thanks so much. Oh, and let you. us know how it goes and let him know that we're here to help him with anything that he needs um, at all. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, say more about your fitness watch and the rings you have uh, come together. So this is just an Apple watch. Yes, sir. Apple. And they have activity rings that kind of close when you reach your goals. Um, for years, we were Fitbit users. Fitbits are great. Um, we really did. We always use these as a way to show us what we're not doing more than it is what we are doing and keeps us really um, honest with ourselves about our activity and our sleep and all that kind of stuff. So Fitbits are great. We just happened to upgrade to the Apple Watch this last year or so yeah. and love this as well. But both are great. Uh, Fitbits are super economical, but they're a great way to help you track. They're not always 100% accurate, mm -hmm. but they're accurate enough to track what you what you're not doing like diane said and that's what we use it more for that than what we are doing yeah so you know we 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 have our goals that are are programmed into the watch so once we hit the goals the the ring will close so if you're not doing that then you know you're not being active enough right right um and i've used like i said the fitbit for years i just upgraded to this while i was waiting to upgrade to an apple watch till they got the cellular service because I'm a runner um, and I wanted to be able to run with my watch and not have to carry my phone, but still have the emergency cellular feature of a watch with the phone on it. So, um, but I love this, but I, like I said, I was a Fitbit user. I feel for, like this is way more accurate yeah, than the Fitbit. It, it is. But like, like Michael said, like, you know, it you don't do it in so much for perfection. You just use it as an aha thing. Like how active have I been? How many days a week did I work out? More of that kind of thing than pure accuracy um, as far as that goes. But the only reason I upgraded to the Apple Watch was the cellular feature so that when I run, I don't have to carry a phone anymore. So, but that was, the, but the Fitbits were great too. Okay, so I think that we hopefully brought some things to you guys' attention, some things to talk about with your spouse. Um, it should really be a fun thing like this for us is like golfing or what, what other people do. Like we love it. It's our hobby. It's our passion. Um, and Michael really would wants to now that he's gone through it himself, be there for other men to show that, you know, it's, it's a cool thing for men to do, to be healthy, um, for themselves, for their wives and for their families. And something as simple as doing nothing for a few hours of your day can really be that opportunity for you to change um, some some things that you might be fearful of, of having to deal with as you age, change some genetic things, change some family history things. Um, and it's all just about taking a few hours of your day and just doing nothing. Yeah, and it sounds like torture, guys, but it's it's really not. I mean, it's not that hard to do. And it's so funny because when Michael um, first experienced the energized sense of common ladies, you know what I'm talking about when I say that, he would walk around the house going, oh my gosh, like this should be illegal. This feeling that I have of pure energy and mental clarity and he would just get his work done, like his brain was just firing off like super accurately and clear. And he was like, the, we would walk around the house like laughing with, how much energy we had and how chill we were and how great our brains were working. So if you have a high stress mental job, fellas, like fasting is fantastic because you'll have so much energy. You'll feel so good, but your brain will be super clear and it'll just be firing off. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go, we are going to, um, 
Diane, my husband listens on the replay after work. Awesome. All right. Super good. Cool. And hey, and if you guys have any specific topic topics that you want us to talk about, or maybe just Michael by himself talk about, let us know. Shoot us an email or put it in the comment section. And we would love to be able to do that for you. Just even like I said, if you just want to have Michael's perspective on something, just let us know. We're here to help you out. But we're gonna run for now because it's Friday and it's sunny outside. So we're gonna go hang out in the backyard by the jacuzzi with the kids for a little while, and then we will see you guys next for or no, you won't be here next friday right no no we won't be here next friday College trips yeah michael's taking the weekend off he's taking logan to uh smu for a scholarship interview on friday and then they're going to drive down to austin and spend austin uh spend the weekend uh, saturday and sunday in austin uh touring uh another school which is a top choice for logan so they're going to logan's two top choice colleges next week and so the boys are going away and gabby and i will be here so we probably won't do a live next Friday. But like I said, if you have any suggestions or anything that you need answered, please feel free to email us or put something in the comment section and we'll get back to you guys. Thanks for tuning in with us. We got you guys. We totally appreciate you being here on a Friday afternoon and we hope that this conversation helps you and your spouse get on board with intermittent fasting. All right. Thanks guys. We'll see you later. Have a great weekend.